Good morning and welcome to Career Launch Live. I am your host, Catherine McCord, and I have two extremely special near and dear guests with me today. First, I'm going to bring on Miss Vanessa Blackstock. Ah! I like to dance. You're like, yeah, it's me. Yeah. I'm here. And then we're also going to bring on somebody very special to me who has uh, who has been helping me out um, and has actually managed to wrangle my insane self for the last several months. Miss Anissa. Hey. Hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, some of you may remember that last week we had on two amazing humans from Synchro, my my absolute favorite client. Uh, that's where Anissa works as well. So, she's also part of the Synchro family. Vanessa is independent and also does some work for my company, Titan. Uh, some of our cool, uh, the great social media posts that a lot of you have been commenting about how great they've been. Um, that's that's all been Yay. her. Yay! <laughs> um, so real quick, so today we're going to talk about what it's like to build international teams and having those relationships, some of the challenges that might come up, but also some of the great benefits. So, but first, I want you each to tell us where you live and kind of the history of what you've done work-wise. So Vanessa, we'll start with you. Oh, awesome. <laughs> So I'm from Jamaica. Big up to Jamaicans listening, hopefully one day. Um, I'm in a small island in the Caribbean. That's where I'm from. And my background is in medicine, science. I am moving from the space of forensic pathology and shifting and making a career transition now to talent development, um, people operations, learning and development, and really wanting to dive more into that area. But I'm also doing a little content writing and content marketing and graphic design and web design and web development. So I'm tapping into she is, everything. <laughs> she's multi-talented, folks. Yes, so very yes. multi-talented. <laughs> and I'm at the point now where I'm saying that and don't feel as guilty. I was like, no, you're not. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. You are multi-talented and we should all be excited <laughs> about that. And Anissa, let's hear about you. I wish you let me go first, because I'd want up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, so, I'm Anissa, I'm from Cape Town, South Africa, and I've actually been with Synchro for four years now. I started at a Texas port trip. They actually brought me on because they needed someone to cover the time zone. And then our company grew, my team grew, I then became a team lead for my South African team. And this year, April, I moved over to the people team and now I am the people ops coordinator. Yay! So and she's team. amazing at her job. <laughs> I just want to say that. <laughs> Your check's in the mail, Catherine. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I So when I very first, I'm going to tell the story because I think it kind of will tie in. So when I very first met Anissa, I let her know that my only other experience having a coordinator was awful and that ever since then I've been horribly afraid of coordinators because the first one I ever had like physically assaulted someone was just like super rude yeah she was she was like off wow. the chain insane and I and Nisa knows more of the story <laughs> yep. was, and as I said you know so just so you know if I'm a little like hesitant with you it's not you personally this was just my experience Within like two days, I could never live without her again. And now I'm like, <laughs> and now I'm like, ah, what would I ever do without Anissa in my life? Um, and and Vanessa, you know, when you took over doing the marketing stuff, that's you know, historically I've had to make like fifty thousand edits to things that people do for me and all that. And I've Whoa. made what like one edit ever to something that you did. <laughs> And, and that's so weird. It's like, that's that's crazy that that happened. And I'm like, okay, I need to do better. What did, you know, I need to fix this. Of course, I need to do better. I need to do better. So it's so weird that you mentioned that one thing versus the one. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, no, that's what I'm saying, though, is it's only happened once. Because mm -hmm. that's amazing. Because you've done such a great job. And, and historically, the people I've worked with that have done that have been in the United States. And so I was like, so this just is kind of a good tie-in with both of you that, you know, Sometimes when you expand and you look outside of what's immediately in front of you, you can find that exact right talent, right? So and somebody says, hey, good people. So <laughs> people saying hi to us in the comments. So I have, so I'm going to start with you on this one too, Vanessa. And I promise we'll start with you at some point, Anissa. But um, 
but Vanessa, I wanted to start with you on this because we did. I did just talk about you and the amazing work that you've been doing with me. So when you know you historically worked in your own country, what made you decide to look outside of mm. Jamaica? Oh wow! Okay, I hope I don't get chewed up for this <laughs> walking on the road. I mean, to be honest with you, I think the opportunity, wanting to step into the space of talent development, people operations, learning and development, I do want to comment and say that's not something that's like readily absorbed in our community, in our country. You know, you come to work, you maybe get onboarded, maybe there's no such thing as, as such. You have a conversation with someone in a part of HR um, and you might get to meet your team lead at some point during that first day. And you get to work to earn the thing that you're being paid for at the end of the month. And I think me wanting to step into this field that's more focused on people or people development and wanting to have that sort of um, role, it's not something that's focused on here. And I think wanting to step into a country or spaces that focus on that, that invest in that sort of thing and are a part of progressive conversations. That was one of the main reasons for me for wanting to work remotely. And I think on the back end, I have to say this, to be honest, I have health issues. And wanting to be home is something that I'm excited about and want to really the remote. pursue. Yeah, so being remote, number one, because of the fact that I get to work from home and everything is like at arm's length. You know, I have that sort of convenience. That's something also that was important to me. That's wonderful. So, Anissa, what what were some of your motivations when it came to looking outside of jobs that were just right in front of your face? Same. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, <am I? laughs> that was that was a great that contribution, Anissa. <laughs> what would we do without you? <laughs> but, but still, no, no, no. Um, no. It was Anissa said the remote work. Um, that was the main thing that drew me to Synchro. Yeah. So, four years ago, remote work wasn't a thing. It was pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. When I saw Synchro was doing a work from home thing, I was like, wow, this is awesome. And the main reason why I did it or I applied to Synchro was because we actually bought some beachfront property two hours outside Cape Town. It's a very nice. small town. It's a fisherman town. And I knew for a fact that the only job I'm going to get there is probably on a boat, you know, right. holding fish. <laughs> right. so I, said, I, I need to put my IT expertise to good use. And then I applied for Synchro and I never looked back. After that, That's is. great. So the remote yeah. aspect was such a big piece and, and the yeah. quality of life. I mean, for both of you yeah. for different, different reasons, but you know, quality of life was, was yeah. part of it. And, and I know Vanessa, I mean, you said this and we've also talked separately. You've talked a lot about you know, the importance of being, you know, have, you have a mission, you know, you want to do better for people that are being onboarded and trained and that type of thing. You have a mission. And so this really aligned doing this type of work and looking outside really aligned with your missions. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people miss that when they, when they're like, okay, well, why would somebody want to take a job that's outside of their company, uh, outside of their country? Well, maybe what they really want to do isn't much of a thing where they are. Yeah. You know, think, people kind of skip yeah, that. <laughs> exactly. And I think being able, and as I mentioned earlier, like not wanting to be jumped on the street, but I think the conversation around. <laughs> please don't yeah. jump Vanessa on the street. Please. I just want to throw it out there. Please do not. <laughs> I will I come mean, to Jamaica and I will find yes, you if you do. Tribe, hold no, me back. Have, hold me back. I have a tribe. So, yeah, I think that is something that's important to note because um, being in my country, there really a focus. There's not a focus on that sort of thing. And I remember being laughed out of a conversation with someone high up in leadership that laughed at me when I mentioned, you know, what can we be doing for the team? What can we be doing better for people? And, and I, will laugh, I was laughed out of that sort of conversation. And I think tapping into a lot of different organizations having conversations like that with persons um i realized there was literally zero interest and if there was there were interests more geared towards how do we train a mass number of sales team members how do we train a mass number of customer service agents which is not a horrible thing but there's nothing beyond that and i think once training is over you sort of you're done you're done for the yeah that's it the next <laughs> <one. Poof. laughs> Yeah, I wanted Don't so you just magically more. know everything after like a week? I mean, isn't that how that works? <laughs> <laughs> and Anissa, so one thing that you know I've seen a lot with you is you, you just like you just dove in headfirst into this <laughs> into this whole people world <laughs> and into into making things better for the team and into inclusion. Like you know, we we had mm -hmm. Synchro on last week, and and you were actually a very big part of their wonderful inclusion efforts. So, talk to me a little bit about you know why 
and why and how you do that for for a team that is all over the world <laughs> so it's just spread out talk to me a little bit about how you accomplish that yeah so first of all when i told my previous people that i worked with that i'm leaving they were super sad right they were like oh no here goes the culture and all of those things because i did super fun things um at my previous company, I would motivate people um, to clear the queue, right? We had something called Waffle Wednesdays that I implemented Ooh. where if everybody, right, Vanessa? Whenever my team cleared the queue, I would make waffles for everyone. And what was so nice about this, we had an open plan floor. Wait floor a minute, plan. why does nobody make waffles for me when I clear a queue? <laughs> Now I'm angry. My husband's going to hear well. about it. I can realize that as well for you. I'll sort you out. We'll talk after the session. So yeah, we had the, f the floor plan was open so we could see different departments. And everybody knew our department cleared the queue that day because the whole floor would smell like waffles. Right? Oh, that's the motivation. As small as that. so, yeah, and it worked. And I, I mean, I'm like, people, we need to clear the queue. The queues are chaotic. And everyone just went at it, right? Because they all wanted waffles. And then I had like potlucks where um, end of the month, everyone would bring something like a, a dessert or a start or a main. And we'll just have a full spread motivation, food, right? If you want to. Yeah, yeah, I, I, like, I like this theme. We're all, we're focusing on food. But I want to ask, so how did you go from doing all these things for the in-person team to doing all these things for a remote team where you can't yeah. just serve them waffles? Regrettably, we can we can do Uber, though, which I didn't do. But yeah, yeah. Oh, the remote team we had monetary um, gift vouchers and things like that. So when the queues were super crazy here at Synchro, we had something called Power Hour at my previous company, and we moved it to something called Focus Friday. And the whole day we just had people focus just on the queues, right? And then we had like a draw um, where you spin the wheel, and if your name gets thrown out, um, you win a prize. And then there would be some very difficult users that would contact us and that people would shy away. And then I'll be like, if you handle Vanessa, for instance, although Vanessa is not difficult at all, I can see. <laughs> um, but if you handle a ticket from Vanessa, I'm going to put your name five times on the wheel so you'll have a better chance. And then everybody would wow. just go and grab all Vanessa's tickets from the queue because now they wanted their name to be five times. So small right? things like that. Yeah. And then I would just do crazy team buildings. Um, see, things you know, I, I think... could do physically and I'll just bring it to the virtual world. I love that. And that's why I keep telling people it's not as hard as you think to build that remote culture, right? And you're and you're working with people across several different countries and um and and keeping everybody united. I mean, the whole team knows each other and likes each other and well, most of them like each other. And they get along. <laughs> they get along very well is the point. They all function at a very high level together. And I think a lot of that, it's the inclusion work of the whole team, but also the uh, the direct teamwork and team building that, that you've implemented that's been huge. Mm -hmm. So people are often afraid of quality of work when it comes to offshore teams, right? And one of the biggest examples, I actually did a post about him not long ago. And actually, I see he's in the comments with us today. So hi, Mervin, <laughs> all the way over there in the UK. Um, so... Mervyn is an absolute genius of a human who helped take our uh, our technical product to a whole new level. And and so when people and I've I've had other experiences like that, you know, I've worked with people in Kenya who were just geniuses and contributed different ways and um and Canada and Venezuela. I right now one of my developers is in Venezuela and he's really fantastic. Mm. So I think people are afraid of it. Maybe it's that I don't know, maybe it's that micromanaging, like, I feel like I need to look at you thing. Maybe they feel like other countries aren't as superior as the United States, which yeah. give me a break on that. But, um, <laughs> um, you know, what, you know, what would you say to people? I'm gonna start with Anissa on this one. What would you say to people that are afraid of the quality of work that they will get if they outsource? I think Anissa has frozen. <laughs> oh no. She warned us that this might happen. What a graceful yeah, pose, did. though. What a graceful pose that wow, she has no been frozen in. So perfectly. No, I'm always like... <laughs> like <laughs> right in the middle of the... All right, so Vanessa, we'll start with you. What would you say to somebody <laughs> who's, I mean, who's afraid of the quality? I think I would say don't be, number one. Like, don't be. 
And I understand, I get it, because you're not necessarily, you don't know the stats of persons that have that sort of experience or exposure from another country. You don't know how well they've been trained. You don't know the school they went to or the, you know, the background that, that they have. But I think one thing I would want to say to not to, to, to reduce that hesitation is to just think of the fact that this person is so dedicated to this type of work that they're willing to open their their scope of search they're willing to open yes. the band off you know where they're planning to work and the fact that that is happening it means that they're more motivated that's what i believe yes. they're more motivated yes. to, want to do the thing yes that's, but that's the thing so <laughs> like with the- you like like when i found you like just randomly i forget even how, i think i think you commented on something or something. i don't know I but yeah we- like an informational <laughs> interview just wanting that's to learn right. more I'm that's right a and conversation and was kept in contact I was just so impressed with you because you were just the passion, just the level of excitement. And, and because you were reaching out to learn so much, you were learning at exponential rates and you just, you kind of caught up to people that have been doing it for years and years within a couple Mm -hmm. of months because you just dove in, like just full fledged dove in. Um, and just so everybody knows, uh, uh, Nisa is just having some technical difficulties. I'm sure she'll hop back on here in a moment. We did not fire her. She has not been fired from the show. (laughs) Um, so, <laughs> so on those kind of same conversations, so the excitement. So then the other thing that people worry about is, oh, you know, if they have to talk to my customers, my customers won't like that it's outsourced. Well, let me tell you something. Your customers don't care as long as they're well taken care of. So if the team is not empowered to do the things that they need to do to actually take care of them, if you just hand them a script, say, say these things and that's it, and you don't actually teach them and allow them to be good at their jobs, that's on you. And that bad customer <laughs> customer experience is on you, not on them. So make sure that you do have to still train these people, right? I mean, you work a lot with the, you were just talking about training and the problems with training. So as long as you're training your people and you're giving them the empowerment to do their jobs, it's not a problem. Yeah. I've never once, I have worked with so many people in other countries. I have never once had a problem with like customer complaints, anything like that. It's just how you treat them. So Vanessa, my next question to you would be when somebody is talking about training somebody that's in another country, what are some things that they should consider and maybe some uh, you know, perks to the fact that this person is in a completely different environment? I mean, I think number one to consider in terms of training is the fact that that person is going to show up not because um, they're, e- they're like they're, they're, they're waiting for you to get done with these things so they can start working. They do want to learn about your company so that they do not mess up, so do so that they're well equipped because they are they do want to learn about this new company, this new culture, this new everything. And I think being that we are going to be ultimately in remote they're going to show up eager to want to learn. They're going to have their notebook. They're going to be ready. So I think on the side of the candidate, on the side of the employee, they're going to be ready to learn. And then it's up to you to be prepared to impart that sort of information. So as you mentioned, wanting to train them as best as you can, not lacking the fact that because they're from another country, things will be different. It won't be. It won't be. Just do it. Do it as you would with anyone else. Just do it. Yeah. Uh, just <laughs> do it as you would with anyone else. There's nothing that's going to be in, um, incredibly different. Um, and I think the next thing is being compassionate also. So when it comes to onboarding, I think being, if you want an inclusive environment, you're going to have to consider, I have holidays, public holidays in my country that are important to me versus public holidays that are important to you. And I think that's the next thing I think companies that's should consider. Big. Yes. Yeah, that's a huge thing. So you're going to have Independence Day on a different day. I might have Independence Day on a completely different day. And I think having compassion and understanding for, okay, you're in another country. These are things I have to consider as I'm onboarding you. Because we have to know, as if you're a Muslim, the times that you're going to be praying. Are you from, a, I saw someone post yesterday about being Jewish. And the fact that there are three major Jewish holidays. And she's yes. like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to negotiate on these days and no. I think having persons <laughs> from other countries it's something to consider so those are and it's true I want to think of. and even here in the in the melting pot of the u.s that's a thing mm-hmm. too you need to be considering this anyway for your teams have flexible paid holidays so that they can celebrate the holidays that are important to them um it can't now i will say it can be difficult because sometimes their holidays are much longer So there are some cultures in which some of the holidays stretch out like two and a half weeks. Well, you may not be able to spare them for those two and a half weeks and an additional week for this and an additional. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes, you know, everybody may need to, to be a little bit flexible, but do your absolute best to, to meet 
to meet the needs and, and start to realize that, you know, unlimited PTO is a good thing. That, that should just be a thing. Just as long yeah. as their job is getting done, who cares? <laughs> you know, just throwing that out there. Um, so when you're, so absolutely when you're, when you're looking to hire these people that are in other countries, embrace their culture, understand that their, their, their mindset may be a little bit different. You may need to kind of, um, you know, be understanding of that. You also need to learn their culture a little bit too. What are some mm-hmm. things that you may say that may be offensive to them that you would, that aren't offensive to you, but that may not be the right thing for them? Uh, yeah. What are some things that you may need to be mindful of that they may experience differently from you? So just that cultural mindfulness, but that's really not that difficult. People act exactly. like, oh, that's so much effort, but it's really not that hard. Exactly. And I think, all. yeah, because um, just as you would, in the conversation we've been having, you know, me and you differently, but like overall in the the trend that would say no is the conversation around neurodiversity, the conversation around disabilities and how to necessarily, how HR teams, executives, team members can accommodate them best. And not, I don't, you know, we don't like the word accommodate, we know that, but like using an opportunity to really ask questions or allow them to speak up in in an environment or culture that says it's okay to say, this is what will allow you to work best. And I think if you navigate it that way, it, it, it just works smoother. So if I'm able to come to you and say, hey, me being remote, I know that you don't have team meetings regularly and you just allow us to work, but it would, it would be great if we're able to meet up maybe once a week or once yes. every two weeks to have a conversation around what's most important or where we are, what are some obstacles that are occurring. And that's something that can work for everybody. Neurotypical, Absolutely. neurodiverse for international and for local um, employees. So I think that's something that needs to be kept in mind at all times. Absolutely. And I would take it a step further and say, invite them to come see you once a year. If Mm. you possibly can't, you know, I Synchro just, just went through this and I, I loved this and I've seen a few other companies do it as well um, in the payment space where I used to work and things like that. And it's genius. So you just once a year, you, you know, tell everybody, okay, we'll pay for your flight. We'll pay for accommodations for two or three nights. We would love to see you and just welcome people to come see you. And some will and some won't. And that's okay. But it's that great opportunity to connect on a very personal level. Uh, If you can bring them to you to train or if you can go to them to train, like if you're opening up a whole call center or something, send somebody to go train them. Don't do that whole thing remote. Come on. Don't be cheap. (laughs) Send people over to go help them out. Um, But that person connection can also be very helpful. So just once a year even. Just see if you can get everybody together. See see what can work out with that. Um, but, you know, I see a lot of people. The other thing that I see a lot of that I wanted to make sure and address is people go, oh, well, it's cheaper if you hire in other countries. Well, first of all, it's not true for every country. So be do be careful about that. There are some countries yeah. that pay better than we do in the United States. So, um, But also be mindful that you're not underpaying people in general for what their labor is worth. So um, I, I've seen a lot of talk about that, you know, oh, I'm going to pay them what's reasonable in their country. Okay, well, I see that, you know, I see mm-hmm. that, but also maybe still pay a little bit better than that, you know, and maybe don't give them the absolute bottom dollar of what, <laughs> what you can Because afford. I think just as you mentioned about quality of life, I think that's one of the reasons as well. We've realized that and this might sound very pompous or whatever you want to attach to it. And I'm embracing that day by day. But I think noticing that the skill set that I have, um, the drive that I have, the unique gifts that I have, I know I can tap into this sort of market or tap into this sort yes. of um, company. And that means also that I should be on par with the other persons that you are interviewing or the other persons that you have considered on a local scale. Like it doesn't make sense to think, oh, because she's from another country, because he's from another country, we're going to look at what persons pay this person in that country. Or this is what they can live off of. This is this is what See, I that's the one I hate. Book. This is what they can live off of. Like, oh God. <laughs> like, okay. I know <laughs> I know that to pay somebody really well in another country, it may be less than it is here in the US, and that's fine. But still pay mm-hmm. them really well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like Yeah, because it's a skill set. Yes. Do not I, go I've for the minimum. Interview. I've been on an interview before where that was a conversation where they were like, you know, what's the expected range? And you know, that conversation around, well, this is what the market value says and my expectation based on, you know, looking at the job description and this is what I believe would be a good range. And I remember just hearing, no, but like for your country, what would be, because I think that'd be too much. 
and having that comment made i, I remember <laughs> thinking like, oh, wow, i really should just stick to customer service i really should just go work at kfc like genuinely it knocked me so hard that i remember thinking this is this is way this i shouldn't be jumping i shouldn't this is way out of my scope which is and so gross that's yeah, so wasn't. gross that somebody treated you like that i go yeah. i i don't understand it i because so when i when i hire outside the country one of two things happens either somebody gives me a rate and i go okay great that's what you asked for here you go poof or like for instance with you i'm gonna use you as an example and i'm not gonna give amounts because that's nobody's business but the the you know i paid you the same like for the for the uh, when you helped with sourcing for a bit and then also mm -hmm. with the marketing stuff i paid you the same as i pay somebody here like, it was not i never asked you, like and i said okay, that, is the this, job didn't change the job didn't change no so i was like now is and i asked you is this still a good rate for you i don't know i don't live in jamaica i don't know what the cost of living there is yeah. but i i i asked you i said and i did do some research afterwards too just to make sure that you hadn't like act you know told me that just to be nice and, nice. and all of that but, <laughs> but you know it is pay people well and and sometimes mm -hmm. people will ask for less than what the pay would be here yeah. um my personal recommendation is still to pay them above that um if at all possible um but don't my point is don't undercut people just because they're some somewhere else ask them what they expect and what they want and then work from there and if they give you an amount that's higher than what you thought that's still their number and be yeah. respectful of that <laughs> because people have skills just because they're in another country doesn't mean they're less skilled or they're exactly. less qualified no let me tell you just from working with vanessa and anisa the, the two that have been on this show today that's that's not a thing uh working with people and i've worked with people in uk i've worked with people in canada Venez like i said venezuela brazil um all over africa russia and let me tell you tell all them. amazing humans <laughs> yeah, all them. these people all these people and let me tell you they were all incredible incredible talented human beings and that are just as valuable some of them more so that <laughs> i mean i have made <laughs> i have made arguments you know, I've, I've talked about, I've talked about you, um, uh, actually on other shows <laughs> and, stuff and, and talked about, you know, and, and, in, and just in discussions with people about, you know, the value that you brought and the different way that you think and, and how, you know, mm. the, the different talent and Mervin, you know, I've talked about him a million times. He's probably tired of it. Um, but, <laughs> but he's, you know, just the, the genius that was brought in, um, from from just expanding and i tell you too i think one of the coolest things for me is the different perspectives that you get from people in different mm -hmm. countries right like anisa's view on inclusion when she does all of her wonderful work there is is yeah. different and she's in a different place in a different culture and, and with a different upbringing and so you just get that different perspective you know mervin came in and just blew us out of the water and set our product in a whole other direction because he thinks differently and has a different upbringing and is literally the biggest feminist I know, which I think is awesome. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I was gonna say somebody made a comment, the pay gap issue for people of color and women and other, uh, and other visibly non-white males get less money and have to always prove their value. Dude. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's Marvin, by the way, saying that. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is so true. Um, and that's another thing I do want to address, just universally speaking. I don't care where you're located, where you're hiring. Do not pay people less because of their gender or color. Mm -hmm. Do not do that. You are a bad human if you do that. Make no mistake. It's not a yes. good business move. You are a shitty human if you do that. Don't do it. <laughs> it's disgusting. Um, pay people what they're worth and get to know what they're worth. And if you can't afford a person, that may be unfortunate for you, but don't undercut them either. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. just don't. I think the conversation around hiring persons from other countries is that it will be cheaper um, because you can pay them whatever you want or you can take advantage of them. And I think on the side of the candidate, on, on, right? On the side of the employee, on the candidate, for me being from an, in another country, I know for sure I won't be able to. On the, on the front end, before, before no negotiations, I probably won't be able to benefit from your you know health plan of course not or your 401k because the laws are going to be different in both of our countries um you think you can take advantage of someone from another country because the things you might say in a meeting i technically may not be able to know the legal way to sue you because you're you're bound by 
it's such and such law. I'm I'm technically not there, so you can say and treat me any way you want. And I think that's something that's important to know. The fact that you're hiring some from another country doesn't mean they're less than human. Yes. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that. Yes. It just, yeah. It it actually allows you to push yourself to another level of accountability. Because because we're not being able, we're not going to be able to benefit from your your um, benefits in terms of four hundred one k, you know, dental, vision, all those different things. Our perks have to come in another way. And if it means yes. that you're going to have us as contracted employees, so you give us all of our money and and make sure that we're paid every month or every two weeks, whatever the arrangement is. That's what you're going to have to do. So our negotiations start from you making sure that you're stepping up your accountability game. I need to make sure as an employee, you're treated just as well or even better. Like yes. because you're from another country. So locally, you won't be able to know that, oh, we're sharing the same doctor. I know his rate. So I know I need to make sure our health plan is beneficial. No, for me, I don't know your doctor. I, I will, might, might never see your doctor. So you need to be able to pay me in such a way that is comparable to that sort of benefit that someone locally will get that I can use to say, I'm being paid in such a way that I can take care of myself in my country and have money to save and live on my own. If you you are hiring a full-time human, if you're hiring a full-time human, then you need to make sure that they can afford medical care and all that. I yeah. consider that. And again, to your point, you oftentimes you can't include them in your benefit plan. There's, mm-hmm. It's not really a practical thing to do. But there, but then again, to your point, compensate them that way. Duh. Like, I just, you know, and, and, and if you, and I would say set the same light. So like, if you, if you don't give benefits to part-time people, then don't give benefits to part-time offshore right. people. If you do, then, then do whatever your policy is, keep it the same, keep it consistent. Again, that's part of inclusion, right? That's just part of just because they're over here. doesn't mean they're not still part exactly. of the team. They're not still valued. Um, and so I, I want to wrap up. I have like, I could talk to you about this for like another half hour. Uh, <laughs> very, very easy, very, very easily. Um, but I, so I want to kind of recap. So we've talked about, you know, that a, you're going to get some crazy good talent and people who are missions, right. That you and Anissa both, and unfortunately she dropped off because of technical yeah. issues. Um, boo, but, <laughs> but you, you both launched into this work because of missions that you felt. And so you get that passion um, that's there that's so strong that you're even looking outside of your own country out of where it might be easier to get benefits or it might be easier to do certain things just to, to keep living your mission. And then you get, um, you know, you, you have, you know, it's easy to build a culture. It's so easy to build a culture. People think it's way harder than what it is. You know, Anissa had some great tips. And by the way, if anybody missed her segments, unfortunately, she she yeah. fell off due to technical issues. But get with me. I'll put you in touch with her. She has some fantastic tips for, for building out uh, remote culture and, and keeping everybody together and keeping everybody linked as a team. Um and, and so you get that, you get, you know, it's very easy to manage the different, you know, build that sameness, just get together, talk to them, go train them if you're able, that type yeah. of thing, just treat them as you would any other team member. It's not that hard, folks. Amen. And then pay people what they're worth, please. And thank you. And <laughs> then give them benefits if appropriate. But the bottom line is, you just get, you just open up your world to so much more talent. If you don't keep your world this small, but you just mm. expand it globally, now you went from having maybe, I don't know, a few hundred thousand people or maybe tens of thousands of people that could do what you want to millions. Yeah. Yeah. And you could just find such cool people and you can actually tried, target people that are on missions. Yeah. I tried to talk to someone about the same thing about hiring overseas. And what the example that I was able to give for him to understand what I was trying to say was, Think of it this way. Persons from Ivy League universities have that same background, have that same upbringing, upbringing and they'll bring that to your to your um, company. But then it looks different when you hire some you, you hire someone that went to a community college, then transitioned into a university space and then is now hiring a stay at home mom that had her degree how many years ago and deciding is she's deciding to step into the marketplace. Like that's a different background. She's going to bring something else to the table. I use that example as a way to say. Is this me or is this Catherine? Oh, no. But yes, just to finish my point, guys, like that's that's the thing I wanted to drive home with him. Like we're going to have a different background from someone yeah. that's from the same country, too. We're going to have that different experience, as, as Anissa mentioned, like having her different tips and ideas yeah. comes from the fact that she has a different background and her creative mind is able to come up with all these different things. And it's going to be of value to you and your team. 
That's right. It's no different than hiring. Like you said, it's no different than hiring somebody that's that can sit next to you that has some of these different different abilities and different backgrounds and all of this and hire people with all different backgrounds. Just, and you can tell when you interview people, you know, I know, you know, you're not supposed to, nor should you ask certain questions during an interview, but you, you'll get the picture, you'll get the picture and you'll see how they think. So just as you're hiring, think globally. And if you're working with a remote team, that's all around the world. Just remember to treat them like you would anybody else and welcome them and get to know them and and give them opportunities just as you would anybody else and reach out to them and just yeah. go, hey, how's this going over here for you? <laughs> there are too many, there are too many communication tools. There are too many tools that are available virtually for us to say it's not going to be possible to connect with someone from another yeah. country. There's those, there's no excuse. Sense. And on top of that, there are companies that are, their only mission is to help companies be able to, you know, hire persons from other countries. So tap into those, to those resources, yes. because I think you'll never, you'll never regret hiring someone from another um, country, hiring someone with a different type of background and cultural experience. You, you, you won't lose. That's no, your of, benefit. Sort of it's a mm -hmm. it's a wonderful experience to have, and I mean, all of us have that have been on the show today have have worked in that environment, and it's absolutely awesome. The creativity, the innovation, the extra insight that you get. I mean, especially if you're trying to build out inclusion, hire somebody from another country. Let See? me tell you, duh, like <laughs> it's it, it will it will work so and, and even to come in and work on your inclusion with you that's a wonderful perspective exactly. because they're going to think so much differently than you and so with that i want to thank everybody for joining us connect with us on linkedin hire vanessa she only works part-time for me so hire vanessa she is incredible um highly 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 recommend um and um and anisa is as a wonderful soul too so anisa anisa Husan, you can find her through me on linkedin so feel free to uh to connect with her there thank you so very much for joining me today vanessa it was Yay. a pleasure as always and yes, everybody take care same time same place next week adios bye